Okay, joint manager Luke Garrick before we make the long trip up to file tomorrow evening. Uh, Luke, obviously a, a disappointing result on Saturday. Um, have you had time to reflect on that and, and can we get your final takeaways? Um, again, game of two halves. Mm -hmm. First half, nowhere near it. As I saw it on Saturday, spoke about not being tight enough, not getting and winning many duels and for me that was how it played out in the first 45. I kind of knew where I was at with regards to the bench and what I wanted to utilise at a certain period in the game. Called upon them slightly earlier, um, but we were chasing the game at 1-0. Mm -hmm. So you could see the impact that the two of them had. Difference in personnel in the back line got us high up the park. We can actually get in touch and we had a go, but I spoke to the group today about having a go in the second half. We need to have a go from the minute one. And we were trying to find the reasons and the whys to why our second half performances are really positive and we are always chasing the game in the first half. Yeah, obviously went 1-0 down at the break. We still haven't scored a goal in the first half. What, what do you think the reason is for that and why you're not starting games maybe on the front foot as you'd like? I'd love to know the answer because um, if I did, I would have re re rectified it after the third, fourth mm -hmm. game. Um, there is questions I've asked the group, I've asked the staff for what reason that is. I've looked at the stats with the SNC boys in terms of our kilometres covered in the first and, as opposed to the second. There's not many differences in terms of that. Maybe going a goal down, the boys have nothing to lose and go a little bit more freedom and the shackle, shackles are off. But yeah, it's something we need to address ASAP because we can't continue to have the first half like we are and then having the second half like we are. The second half is very positive and you get a little bit of a hope in terms of for the next game, but we don't marry up the 2.45s and... That's something we need to do. If we perform like we have done in the second half across a 90, we'll win a game of football. Yeah. It's just, as it stands at the minute, mate, we are chasing games and the boys have in their heads that there's the fear factor gone. I speak to the group about not fearing losing, just go out there and play your game. And that's something that we spoke about today and hopefully we can implement it tomorrow against Fylde. Obviously, sitting now in the bottom half of the table, not where we wanted to be at the start of the season. Just Chris, does that change any of your... Your mindset's now going into these games against Eddie Fylde, who are also struggling? Not at all. It's just, for me, I speak to a lot of managers. I was on the phone yesterday to managers in our division, the league above and the league above that, and I was asking them questions about how they found it this year. Um, and no game's easy. That was the common denominator that I got from the managers in our division. No matter who you're playing against, they have a star man, they have a way of playing, they'll have a style. Um, and you need to guard against that. There's no easy game in the National League. I'm 450 games deep as a manager. There's never been an easy game in the National League. So, no, will not be treated and filed with any disrespect. They're a fantastic outfit. Watched them against Solio and I thought they were well in the game. And I watched them against Southend and listen, we know the issues Southend are having and they're putting square pegs in round holes. I get that, but you still have to go and deliver on a performance. Far about outstanding. They played a shape that you speak, you listen to his post match interview about countering and sticking it on them, and they did that in abundance. The likes of Kay, Ostabasi, uh, Horton, Omateo, their front four, very productive. They break the pace, they got intent. So, no, nah, because they're where they are currently in the division, they have enough firepower, enough quality, they work some superb set pieces. I showed the group today that they have all 10 personnel just five yards outside the 18 yard box taking a set piece and they're like spitfires so we need to guard against that they've scored two of their first set pieces in their last two games so short story long there's no easy game in the national league mate we fully respect what they're doing and how they go about the business we go there fully focused and we need to perform at our maximum. Yeah, and a more positive news with regards to injuries we obviously saw angelo back and erico both both had an impact in that second half and yeah, again, injuries are starting to look a bit, bit nicer in the injury list. Yeah, listen, I'll be honest with you, I was going to do the two changes probably prior to the half-time, but I can't be foolish. Erico's been out over three, four weeks, and Angelo Valente has been out five weeks. Yes, he's been in match-day squads, but he's 20 minutes against York, 15 minutes against Maidenhead, 20 minutes against Rochdale. I'm not an idiot. We know what he possesses, so... Already you see his goals returned for his minutes played. He's the best in the club. Um, we know what they possess. We know what they possess. We have been hit by injuries. And again, I speak to managers and we try and talk about why we feel that 
there's a lot of injuries across the National League. Is it the extra time, the intensity has gone up a notch? I genuinely don't know, but you'd have seen most of the gaffes leave prior to us coming in here. He's a massive loss. Jack Payne was a massive loss for 10 weeks. Eric Sosa's is a massive loss. Andrew Lander is a massive loss. David Aikon Tom is a massive loss. These are big key personnel in our group. And like I said, we are starting to see the return of them, but at times we've got to drip feed them in. Mm. I can't be in a position where I put the Agbon Thomas, the Sosas, the uh, Angela Melantas straight back in. I didn't really want to play Paney to the level that I'm playing because 10 weeks out with a medieval, he hasn't trained, he hasn't got the physical attributes to go in back to back. And with a period we're going in at the minute, we've got a box clever because I can't have a reoccurrence of an injury. But yeah. The chairman's been fantastic. He's telling me we need to sign players. I'm not foolish, we do need to recruit. He's getting the right ones and we are doing our work. And I keep alluding to talking to other managers, but at the minute the market's saturated and we need to ensure that we get the right ones in the building so that we're not just clustering up with mediocre. We need personnel that are going to put Eric on the bench, Andrew on the bench, Marshall on the bench, Payne on the bench, Agbon Tom on the bench, because if that's the case, then we're looking very strong on the pitch.